diving in a bit deeper to functions or custom functions uh, we'll make a, a setup and um, just give you an example of um, a, a nice way to use it and um, the different things that we can do with custom functions and I'll also show you an example in a project that I'm working on where I'm using functions and what I use them for um, so a good example would be creating a node as explained in my last video about operators versus functions um, we'll use a function to create a node um, let's go materials any material um, any node tree under the nodes category we'll go new node and we're going to create a new node on the active material which will be what will be open in the shader editor and we'll plunk this into the function and we'll create an input so that we can set a name for the type of node that we want to create and um, to find the type of node that we want to create we can um, just jump into context and copy the context from the shader editor and if we have a node selected while we do that we'll have active node um, for any active node just print the BLID name which is the official name for um, nodes and how they're called so if we were to have um, something like a glass BSDF we have that active we can print the BLID name for it and um, I actually have to do this with a key press because we're just getting the active node in the active window which is not what we want um, we'll grab a on key press and an operator instead of that trigger we'll just link this operator to the button and when we press y hovering over this window we'll get the official name for this node which is shader node bsdf glass and over here we can say shader node bsdf glass and say when we create a glass node um we also want to set the width we can set a property for that we can say um also set the width um this needs to be done either through um space data or we can just go to data back to materials again and we can say for any material what material are we on 001 um doesn't really matter any node they all have a property called width and we're just going to change the context for it anyway to be for the node that we create and we're going to set the property to be float and we'll say um something ridiculous like 350 and we'll set the location to be something like um minus um minus 200 or 300 on the x so we'll go float vector changes to vec2 because this deals with 2d coordinates and um, we could say on the x minus um, yeah, 200 and what else um, just for now we'll leave it at that but we can expose parameters on the outside and say so like if we want to every time we create a node we want to change the width we can also plug that on the input as well call this name of node and call this width of node we can use the same function to create different nodes so let's um, also print the BLID name for this shader nodes bsd node bsdf principled oops um, shader node was it bsdf yeah it was bsdf principled and we can create a node with this function and its width will be 150 for this one we can change it to like 350 
and um, if we just hook this operator up here and we say um, boy got created at minus on the x location that we set and it was set to 150 uh, width and if we now connect up this function um, we'll get another node that's created um, I suppose was wrong I guess shader node bsdf principled shader node bsdf principled um, am I not setting this name oh, shader node principle there we go um, got created with a, a different width and but at the same location and we can even expose like where the location that we want to create new nodes is going to be on the outside so I'm going to say location of node change this to vec2 and we'll create another class bsdf and we'll make it something like um, minus 600 now when we run this got created over here so this one function now can create uh, multiple different nodes with different widths and different locations and we don't need to keep duplicating this over and over again every time we want to create a node and um, as explained in my last video functions can also return information so something that would be handy to return is um, this node socket which points to the node that we're creating and if we expose this on the outside and call this node um, and we return that value um, now we've got immediate access to this node so like um, we can set um, create set and um, do things with the node that we create we can export this out as a snippet or something but still have access to the node in case we want to do something else so like um, say if um, you don't want to pack setting certain properties into the function um, we can do basically what this is doing here now with returning the node but just on the outside of our function so that's something handy that we can um, we can have and like we can also return other things as well like say if um, a node can have um, a selected value like is it selected or not we could return that and um, change this to boolean and it doesn't really make sense that we would return this value but I'm just using it as an example and call this select and um, if this node gets created and it's selected um, this will output a, um, a boolean value probably not the best example but just showing you how um, again this is no different to like node groups or group nodes where you can have inputs and outputs and just return um, different information depending on what's happening inside of the function so now um, yeah just with one function we can do multiple different things and um, we could even have this function do a completely different operation where if we set like um, if we turn on insert sockets and we at the top just add like a boolean we could add a condition in here to say if this boolean is true then create a node or if it's false then do something completely different like um, just set the width of a node and we could say like what node um, would you want to set well we could use like um, just active node or um, probably wouldn't want to use this one because we're not creating a node in this case so we could just probably use like context um, active node whatever that active node happens to be um, so now this function can also double um, as two different um, sort of operations and if we call this like um, create node or change width node we've got um, multiple different um, operations that we can do with it and this can be really handy for minimizing node setups and um, yeah just having these custom little functions that you can um, just reuse over and over again 
depending on inputs whether they um, and how the function is called and you can also export um, these functions as snippets and that's basically all that a snippet is it's just an exported function and you can install them so they're sort of like a pre-packaged um, function ready to go so like for example here I have a math node and if you're wondering why I have a math node um, the native one um, has a property on the node for setting what type of math but you can't actually change that from a socket um, so you'd have to have two of them and then do like a switch data or something you know to switch between the two of them but um, yeah with this I can um, change what operation is being done um, with an out uh, sorry with an input socket and you'll notice on this one there's no um, require execute because I'm really just taking in two values doing some math and then outputting the value the result of that so don't really need a, an execute for this where this node specifically needs to be executed in in the um, the chain of operations whereas if you're doing something like this um, you definitely want um, an execute because um, it sort of relies on that execute on the outside um, to provoke the two different stays depending on the boolean and, and that sort of thing yeah so a lot of the time like if um but like just to recreate this math node um, and give you an example if we're doing like um, a math operation just move that out of the way and I'm taking like one input and another input doing a math operation um, and then just returning the value we can just we still need to plug in the return to make sure that it's returning something but now with this um, run function mode we can just turn this off because it's not really required you know we don't really need anything executed and to export a snippet you just um, grab the run function and export it out and then to install it you just install that JSON file that it um, exports out and um, yeah snippets are really handy for just like really repetitive things like for example um, I have one here for checking if an add-on is installed I can check the module name and if it's um, if it's installed or not I've got um, another one where I check the distance between two points this is handy for like proximity stuff that I've been doing with an add-on um, so this runs a script inside of it and you can also do that where like if you find a neat little script on stack exchange or something um, you can input values into a script and, and have um, variables and then reference the script and then export this out and make um, neat little nodes another example what else have we got um, the location between two different points a list to a vector um, what else we got um, thought I had one for here we go setting um, an active object and making it selected at the same time and I've um, added like a few different things into this function where like um, say like I want to set an active object by name and make cube active and selected I can also store it in a variable and turn that on um, if I want to target it by index I'll use this instead of the name so yeah they're just custom nodes and custom node groups basically no different to this um, yeah so functions can also return different data depending on what happens in the function as well so you can have multiple different returns that return different values depending on what happens so let's say for example instead of using like a boolean that we have been using we'll use an enum um, we can create a custom enum where we go like one two three 
and on the outside over here we have one two three and this function will get run depending on which one is selected um, we can map the enum inside of the function and we can say if the value equals one or if it equals two or three then return different values and where this might be handy is if um, say you're checking properties or um, setting values and then returning values we can have this set to like two four six um, we can return different values and with our function run now it doesn't matter which one of these three that we choose to return it's just auto it's going to auto detect which one's returning data so it doesn't matter which one you choose it can be any of them and this will now be um, any one of these three outputs so if we um, grab a trigger and a print node one is going to return 2.0 if we choose number three um, there we go we've got a different value we're returning different values um, one limitation of this is that um, you can't sort of return different properties so like if this is a boolean uh, we can't switch i don't think between like returning a float and returning a boolean because they're not really related and um so yeah this output is only going to detect what we set this to so if we set this to the boolean property it's only going to output a boolean as far as i know oh okay maybe not zero and one not so it's still returning float um yep so that's a little bit of a limitation but it's really handy if um yeah you just want to create a condition and say like only return one value or another and um like an example of this would be something like checking the location of an object and um if it's true if it's greater than zero zero on the graph then it would be true and if it's not then it's not and you could do like comparing um the outside um, location of something to i don't know like active object location or something and if that condition equals true you could return like two different boolean values and so on and so on so functions are extremely helpful and um yeah really versatile in what they can do as opposed to an operator which um can't really return um information like you kind of can with a variable if you were to set a variable within the operator but um yeah functions can just directly return information and um that just makes things um easier so maybe i'll open up a project i've been working on and just show you where um i've been using functions um here's a good one where i'm appending from a file an object and um setting it to be active um storing the object showing expanded um showing the wireframe for the object but um each time i run this function i want to append a different object in so i can just plug that into the name socket for the append file and um instead of duplicating these nodes for every single operator now i can um, just use one function to complete the same task but with just different inputs and another thing that um functions are really useful for is breaking up large node graphs so as an example this is how i typically tend to work is i'll build everything out on one graph but then start breaking it out and um sectioning off things so like for example all of this this is all pretty much related to one sort of operation so um basically i can move this to another graph and just use a function to run it so if we grab like a function run execute and where's this coming from that socket there 
and we grab a run function I could plug this into here now this is all contained within a function and I can run it from this one node and what I can do is grab all this now and copy it delete it start a new graph paste it here and now we've Oh, also with functions, um, they need to be updated too. Like if you move functions to different graphs, you want to be updating what graph they were referencing. Um, so these would all need to be changed. And on the main graph back here, um, because we moved the function to a different graph, which was node tree, we also need to update that. But now I can just start sectioning off parts of the node tree and spread it out over different node trees and organize things and um, Blender tends to struggle less when there's less nodes on a graph so like back here on this one with this graph like just adding a node at the moment is a little bit laggy and the bigger your node trees get um, the more lag is going to occur so um, yeah like here's a, a node graph that I'd built out and now I'm just starting to break everything up into the functions and just separate things out. I got rid of all the bottom section and moved it to a different graph and then I had a different section moved to a graph and I'm just naming my graphs um, accordingly and um, yeah the cool thing about functions is um, you can also just look for where it's being referenced so like if, um, if I click here um, it can just show me like where where it's been called and that was just a dummy one but I'm not actually calling that anywhere but um yeah here's another node graph that I've built and I'm gonna have to start sectioning out things because all of these noodles and all the text and all the boxes and everything that's being drawn through blender is really slowing this graph down now um, yeah, so functions can be just used as simple as that, just breaking something out, containing it into its own little node tree, and it just makes things easy to build to, like you can just know that, alright, I'm calling this from somewhere, and I can just fo focus on this one section of my little node tree, and um, I don't end up with like heaps of nodes bunched up on top of each other and, and whatnot, I can just have like different functions that get run here and there yeah so like another way to think of a function is kind of like a portal um you can also just use them like a portal so like um instead of running data through a portal and then having the out um you know to minimize like having noodles go everywhere um that's basically just what i'm using functions for on this graph and um, you can see like this function for example doesn't even have a return because they don't need a return like if um, if you're not returning information then they don't need to be hooked up but um, here like this is just a simple little function where I'm getting the if it's edit mesh mode or if it isn't and setting a variable and this variable gets used you know like in several different places um, according to what's happening and, and whatnot yeah, so those are pretty much like the main use cases for um, functions. Here I've got another function where I need to set a lot of properties and this is for snapping. So like I want to change like all the snapping values um, from this menu up here. But um, I also don't want to have to keep setting all of these properties every time I want to change a snapping node. Basically what I can do is have an enum input and say like this will be snapping to vertex mode and this will be edge midpoint and um, I can just hook this up and um, yeah, change what happens in the function and now when I whoops, when I call the function somewhere I can um, set a different value and even use different properties to set what happens inside the function yep so that's my little deep dive on custom functions in serpents and the different ways that um, you can use them what they're used for and um, hopefully these examples help help you understand a little bit better what they are and whatnot 
So yeah, that's pretty much all I got for this topic. I hope it helps. And um, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.